how do we uh, try to identify if a thing is living when we go to Mars, when we go to uh, the different moons in our solar system, when we go outside our solar system to look for life yeah. on other planets? It's unlikely to be a, a sort of a smoking gun event, right? It's not going to be, hey, I found this. You don't think so? I don't think so, unless you find an elephant on some exoplanet, then I can say, yeah, that's there's life here. No, but isn't there a dynamic nature to the thing? Like uh, it moves, it has a membrane that looks like there's stuff inside. It doesn't versus... need to move, right? I mean, like look at plants. I mean, they, they grow, but there are plants that or can be also pretty dormant. And arguably they are the most, they do everything that uh, is one of my favorite professors once said that the plant does everything that a giraffe does without moving. So the movement is not Zen statement. necessarily. <laughs> but on a certain time scale, the, the plant does move. It just moves slower. Yes. It moves pretty I would I would say that I'm, and I'm, I'm, it's hard to quantify this or even measure it, but it is a, um, life is definitely the um, chemistry finding solutions, right? So it is chemistry exploring itself and <laughs> and maintaining this exploration for billions of years. So, okay, so a planet is a bunch of chemistry, and then you run it and say, all right, figure out what uh, what cool stuff you can come up with. That's essentially what life is. Given a chemistry, what is the cool stuff I can come up if, with? If that chemistry or the solutions that it embarks upon are maintained in a form of memory, right? So it, it's, the, it's you, you don't just need to have the... Uh, explore exploring chemical space, but you need to also maintain a memory of some of those solutions for over long periods of time. So that's the memory component uh, makes it more living memory. to me. Because ke chemistry can always sample, right? So chemistry is chemistry. But are you just constantly sampling or are you building on your former solutions and then maintaining a memory of those solutions over billions of years, or at least that's what happened here. Chemistry can't uh, build life if it's always living in the moment. The physicists will be very upset with you. Okay, so memory could be a fundamental I mean, life is not just, life. Chem I mean, life is obviously the chemistry and physics uh, leading to biology. So this is not a disciplinary, problem of one discipline triumphing other discipline it's that but what what you need to have is definitely I mean, chemistry is everywhere right i tend to think you can be a chemist you can study chemistry you can study physics you can study geology anywhere in the universe but this is the only place you can study biology this is the only place to be a biologist Earth. that's it yeah so so definitely something very fundamental happened here, and you cannot take biology out of the equation if you want to understand how that vast chemistry space, how that general sequence space got narrowed down to what was what is available or what is used by life, you need to understand the rules of selection, and that's when evolution and biology comes into play so the the rules of natural selection operate to you on the level of biology. Rules. I don't know if there are any um, rules like that. It would be fascinating to find in terms of the biology's rules. That's a very interesting and um, it's a very fascinating area of study now. And probably we will hear more about that in the decades to come. But if you want to go from the, the broad to specific, you need to understand the rules of selection. And that is going to come from understanding biology, yes.